Hello and welcome to the show. Now, as we know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been chatting to people that make a difference in the world. Sue Barnes is here from Project Dignity, and she's one such person making a huge difference to many people. Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Now, before we talk about your project, it's, it's an interesting one. You're busy creating waves all over as we're going along, and it's an important one that we're busy with. But you as a person, Sue Barnes, who are you? Okay, well, I'm a very happily married woman. I've got an amazing husband, um, two daughters, 16 and 19, and was through one of my daughters that opened my eyes to this problem of these young girls in South Africa. And yeah, I live in Durban and very busy. Now, uh, this, this component of yours, this project of yours, we talk about something that's project dignity and, and that's restoring the dignity of some people. With that comes the humanitarian aspect. Has that always been you? Yes, I think um, uh, my father died when I was very young and my mother got quite ill and went into hospital. So I basically brought myself up from about 14. So I think, yeah, you have a passion and understanding for people who go without because you have, you come from a difference. And yeah, having two daughters and it being a woman issue, I think, yeah, I just worked on my heartstrings and wanting to help people, you know, uplift South Africa, uplift the women of South Africa. And so beyond. Now, the project, uh, I remember a couple of weeks ago, a gentleman from your office came to talk to us and tell us about this project, which helps with the young females and the ladies out there that have certain issues that happen every month and that sort of thing. So a subject that maybe many people don't want to talk about, but that's what we're going to do today. Yes. How does your project help them? Well, you know, as you say, it's a taboo subject. They yeah. don't talk about it, um, especially in the cultures. And these young girls, um, a lot of them are from childhood at home, so there's nobody at home to discuss it with a parent. If they have a brother or an uncle, a, a man or a woman will not talk about the topic. So, um, it's yeah, we try and educate the young girls all about their bodies, how they function, um, that they are going to go through puberty, then on to menstruation, how their body works, they can fall pregnant, what's going to help, you know, make them fall pregnant, because nobody t teaches them and tells them what's going on. So we find a problem going on here, and that's uh, looking at the economic downturn of many economies throughout Africa, we find a situation where sanitary towels and that sort of thing are, have become a commodity that's very expensive. And many people across South Africa and beyond cannot afford that. And that's where you sort of plug in with your project. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, well, you know, a lot of these homes, um, as I said, they're childhood homes. If they have small grants, it's a healthcare product or food. You know, so they're definitely going to be spending their money on the food and not the healthcare product. So we're trying to help them and educate them, uplift them uh, onto better things in their life, uh, obviously get the education, and just for women to be empowered and make something of the world. So we are, we're trying to help uplift them. It's also the eco-friendly side of the product. So we're uplifting South Africa as a whole. And yeah, it's, it's a, just an awesome project. A couple <laughs> of weeks ago, my assistant came to me and said, it's an interview you need to do about a reusable sanitary towel. And I thought you were joking with me. <laughs> I, I think you need to explain that in detail to us. <laughs> okay. Because uh, it's really that way. It sounds yes. weird to many viewers, I suppose. Yes. But that's the reality. And, and there's a story about why this reality. Yes. Um, my youngest daughter, as I said, was my daughter who brought this to my attention. She came home from school. Um, she's dyslexic, so it's a remedial school. So straight away, she's at a disadvantage because she doesn't learn as everyone else learns. And um, she came home with a letter asking for sanitary pads and panties because the girls in the rural areas, they don't have sanitary pads and panties, which means they miss a week of school a month. I mean, that's a quarter of the education, which really? is a whole term a year. I mean, it's crazy. And it I doesn't just equate to 25% of the year. Yeah, it's 25% yes. of the year. I mean, I think where would I be if I missed a term every year? Y you can't get your education. Correct. And her with her dyslexia, if she missed a week this month, right. next week when she's... I mean, next month, when she's come to menstruate again, those three weeks in between, she would never have caught up just with her learning difference. So there's lots of people out there with learning differences. The education system's not up to scratch. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of negatives against it. So, and this is one way we're going to try and help keep the girls in school. So if there is anything else that's going to affect, it's not going to be menstruation. They're going to be in charge of their lives. So if you're looking at the product itself, it's actually a sanitary towel that's reusable. Yes. And, and you've packaged that and you've marketed that um, in a particular fashion to help people. Yes. How did that part come about? Was this through some testing? I know that the product itself has 
absorbent materials and that sort of thing. How did that all come about? Um, I did study fashion design and I uh, specialised okay, in... So that just combined yeah, just with, just what, with the vision. Helps, right. yes. <laughs> and I specialised in fabrications, just pure chance by the companies I worked with, what the products were we were making. So I had a good understanding of what fabrics to use. So uh, it took quite a long time, about six to eight months to get it correct. There were obviously lots of prototypes and different fabrications. There's different hydrophilics, different absorbencies. So we had to get the right layers of the fabric, obviously making it comfortable, easy to use, because girls from as young as 10 are using the product. So if it's not easy for them to use, they're not going to use it. You know, so it's got to be um, yeah, lightweight, easy, easy to wash. That's a big thing. Keep it clean so the girls are healthy. So yeah, that's the, the product that's developed from, from there. So I, I don't think many people know the realities of the problem itself. Uh, many people that watch uh, shows like they're watching right now are people that have access to television on satellite and that sort of thing. So you're talking about a spectrum of people that don't always understand the issues flat down on the road. What does it mean to a girl out there that does not have access to sanitary towels? Sure, well it means that she well, can... What's the actual physical uh, approach to that? What's the solution to them without your product? Well, the girls that, that haven't had my product, that are in this situation, they use, they either just don't go to school so they don't go out their house, because, I mean, it's a mess. So they either use packets tied around them with sand and leaves in the packet, old cloths, um, old newspapers, old rags, anything they can find, um, cow patties. So that on its own is very unhygienic. So It's dignity also. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the funny thing is that um, I don't think we realize that the problem is that big. Yeah. It doesn't sound that big to, to, to a male sitting mm. out there or someone you're telling to. But I mean, the fact that you've gone and delved into that, one can clearly see that there's a problem. Yeah, it, it, it is a very big problem. There are the census of South Africa, the, I think it was 2011, there are 9 million girls in South Africa between 10 and 19, and 7 million of those girls in the lower LSM bracket. So that means 7 million are below the bread line, so they don't have access, can't afford sanitary pads. It, it's, it's a huge, huge figure. So you're sitting one day and your daughter comes to you and you decide this is going to be the plan and you're going to move from there. Yeah, I had to do something to help these girls. I couldn't sit back and know that a woman uh, has no dignity. I mean, you can't go to school, can't play sports, she can't be educated, she can't get a job. It's not fair. A and therefore aptly named Project Dignity. I mean, I think we see that now. So you, you go out, you start manufacturing. What's the first response has been like? Well, I started the project five years ago, and when I f found out about this project, there was three schools that we were specifically raising the sanitary pads and panties for. So my whole vision was these three girls, these three schools, to get all these girls to stay in school. And then when I um, was going about it, then I started doing more research and realizing that it's actually a huge problem in the whole country, not just these three schools. So um, yeah, the project like just really grew yes. and um, when I was talking to these girls and giving them the product I realized that they weren't educated in their body in puberty menstruation sex like what's going on with the woman you know and it's due to that that also these other things that are, are compacted it's um, teenage pregnancies which is a huge problem in South Africa you know they, they're not educated they drop out the system just have a baby to get the grant you know girls in rural areas if the grant is 300 Rand it's 300 Rand they never had you know to us maybe it's not a lot of money but to them it's a lot not realizing that how much the baby's gonna cost correct yes because there's no future for these girls Correct. so so the product gets to market as you're saying what has been some of the responses uh, they are is the definitive people that come to you and I know that uh, our camera guys went out today and you had an activation and there's been huge positive response to that. But how do you feel about that, knowing that you took part in something or created something that has changed many people's lives? I just feel so blessed that I'm able to be um, in an environment where I can make a difference to so many girls' lives. You know, it, it, one of those girls could be my daughter, could have been me. So I would have liked someone to come and help me, you know, and I think that's what we have to do. We have to think about others and help others. And if we can lift others, their self-esteem, yeah, it's, 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 everybody did that, it would be great. How does business and society assist you to do what you do? Well, um, society are always very receptive to it. Obviously, it's a financial thing that we, you need the funds to have the product made. 
So um, society help people donate where they can, personal, through business. But it's the big funders that we need to get out there to all the girls. We, we need the, the big corporates, um, the big funds, you know, people who, who really want to see a difference and make a difference. You Does know, it tap into CSI or something? Yes. So you're asking corporates to come on board and say, okay, South Africa's got a problem. Uh, you guys have a CSI budget. Can this be one of your campaigns to assist these girls? Because you're plowing into education, you're plowing into dignity of South Africans. Yes. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these companies obviously um, want to help, and they do. They do help it as far as the funding goes. Tell us, going forward, uh, we, we see you going around the country doing these activations. Uh, we're seeing many people that actually take your product and are being saved, in a way, yes. uh, from the demeanors of not having these things. Uh, where do you go to from here? Is your scope only within South Africa? I know that there's a big market within South Africa for what you do, and the problem is big enough. But have you got your eyes set further than South Africa? Because if you're looking at Africa, Africa is, uh, I'll say that South Africa is one of the countries that are better doing yes. than uh, most of the mm. African states at the moment. So the problem is, is worldwide. It but absolutely but Africa worldwide, is a yeah. call for you right now. Yes, it is worldwide. I have gone across the borders a bit, not much. But um, there is a big calling everywhere. I mean, even like Peru, Peru, Brazil, India. I mean, there's huge poverty everywhere. And if we could just uplift the women, it would be awesome. Yeah. Now you've put this into a nice package. You and your marketing team has put that together nicely. What do we see? I know it comes in a little bag. You've got one there. Yeah, this is just a little sample bag. Yes, if we can maybe yeah. just take us through that quickly. Sure. So this is just a sample bag. But the pack that I give the girls has obviously got a lot more components in it. And what it is, is we manufacture a panty. Um, it's 100% cotton, moisturized, elastic. Yes. It's, you know, the pack will last the girl five years. So if we give her a product, it's got to last five years. We can't okay. say we're giving you something for five years and it's not. Correct. So there the panty has clips on, as you can see. Right. And this is the sanitary pad. And we're also going to be showing our viewers quite a bit of this on screen uh, with the demonstration that happened this morning. Okay, so this is the sanitary pad. The one side's a hydrophobic. So the blood will go through it and keep the body dry. Okay. Inside are the hydrophilics, the layer. Yes. Different density, so they absorb at different levels, so they pull all the blood into the pad. Yes. Then underneath the cotton is a plastic layer, so there's no seepage. So the girl can be confident that she's not going to have an accident. And that's all tested and you checked it all Absolutely. Out. SABS absorbency approved, Excellent. patented, endorsed by a gynecologist and a pharmacist. Okay. So, yeah, it's an accredited product. Yeah, so that means that it's th there's no easy parts to allergies and... No allergies the whatsoever. And that sort of thing. Yeah, there's got no chemicals or gels in it, so there's definitely no allergies, which is also a huge problem in with four menstrual products. Um, a lot of women get thrush from it, so this will obviously alleviate all that. So the pad just easily clips into the panty. And these come in different sizes, of course. Yes, the panty comes from a girl's age 10, because okay. we are helping girls from 10 through to a 4XL, because it has very high absorbency quantities, quality, sorry, and um, new moms use it a lot, because, you know, after they've had a baby, they bleed quite a lot. Correct, yes. So it clips in very easily. She wears it for okay. three to six hours, depending on her flow. Yes. And when she needs to change, she just clips it out. Wash that washes out it and reuses it. And yeah. inside the back, how many of those are there? Okay, so she'll get three pairs of panties, right. nine pads, yes. nine little bags. Okay, So these the are bag is for the emergency time. Is well, right? this is when she's at school and she can't wash it because yes. our schools in rural areas have no sanitation, no running water, Correct, yes. so they can't wash them at school. And also they probably don't want to wash it at school, you know, in the bathrooms. Yes. So they just put the pad in here, take it home and wash it. And then we have uh, washing instructions. Okay. So, I mean, I think that you, you've really gone the way to try and get this all going and putting that in world in order. Yes. Uh, I know that you go to an activation and you introduce the product and a corporate comes on board and they assist you to get that product into the hands of a recipient. Yes. Have you bumped into people that are now using your product and their lives have changed because of what you and your team does? Yes. Um, a lot of the schools have called me back. Actually, one school I've been back to five times. You know, every year as the girls are moving through, the grade eights are coming in, so they want to give them the packs because they can see the difference it's making in the school. And um, actually, a school I did this year, um, I did it about June, uh, end of July, that she's just phoning now now, to say that um, not one girl missed one midterm exam. And I was like, oh, this is what we're aiming for. Keep the girls in schools, write the exams, let them pass. It's like just, it's awesome. It's awesome to know that what you're doing, you're actually achieving what you want to do. And there you are sitting in Durban, <laughs> making a difference around the country, and, and, and yeah. we, we still need to, to dig in that story. Now, you are surrounded by a team of people yes. uh, that are into marketing, some in finance, some taking the product out there. Tell us a bit about them and their operations and how they 
plan to take the product. Uh, it's a product that I believe should be around the world. Yes, it should be. You know, it's also an eco-friendly product, which um, there's obviously a big lean towards that at the moment. The whole world's going eco-friendly. So that's also an awesome way to get it out there. People are helping to save the planet. But I have an amazing team I work with. Um, in Cape Town, we've got Jenny Lane, Yvett and David. And um, yeah, they're mainly the marketing, so they're getting the product out there, getting the awareness out there. Because the more people are aware of it, the obviously the more people want to help. And so things don't always happen overnight, but it's it's you know as long as awareness is getting out there, it's great. And then we've got a whole sports team run by Lisa, and uh, sporting events we raise funds for the product. So yeah, it's going nicely. It's it's moving in the right direction. Uh, what's the assistance been from governments at this point? Uh, do they still need to come on board, or mm. are they on board? <laughs> No, government um, obviously aware of the huge problem. They know that there's a big problem. They, but they should be. They, yeah. they, have an, they run an education department. They should be understanding yeah. why people are not coming to school. Well, they do know that it's from that, but they, yeah. they just say there's no funds. They really aren't. They're not interested. They haven't helped. They, they are very aware of the product. Um, I know I've been but to many, many... They're talking about grades, and they're talking about grades, and they're talking about, about results getting better, and those kind of things. So they need to perhaps go into the root cause of why results yeah. are not sitting where it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they just, it's almost like they turned a blind eye to it. Like, maybe it's because it's men and men don't want to get involved in the, the problem. But then uh, so I think, no, because I also see women in the government, you know. So, yeah, it uh, really is a... Do there's a stereotype around that that's, that still needs to be broken? Uh, do you believe that, um, that the, you still need to pass that divide with society and community and then you know, religion sometimes has taught us not to mention and talk about yes. these things. Do you believe that that must still be broken? That barrier where we as South Africans talk about things that really affect other people, be it m we may think it's perhaps down below the belt, but it's not. This is a scientific health issue. Yeah. You know, I think that if, if the problem like this was in the open and everybody did t talk about it, it would actually bring down a lot of abuse on women because sex and menstruation would all be out there. People would be talking about it. Women, women would know that what's right, what's wrong, that you know they don't have to have sex if they don't want to. So I do think it's a, a topic that does need to get out there more. And also, as we said, it's taboo in their cultures. So you know they don't talk about it. A lot of the girls are from childhood at home. So it's, yeah, it's... I'm very perturbed by the fact that you mentioned all these, when I asked you a pragmatic question about these youth are walking around and they, they're using carrier bags and stuff mm. like that. Um, I, I really think that's very undignified and a project like yours would, would raise the status of, a, of that person for, and on a humane level and I think people need to understand that. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it is, as we said, the dignity. So that's what we're trying to lift from the woman. We're trying to empower the woman. Let her be something, be special, be important. And this whole management program is a, is a base for her to manage her life, you know. If you can't even manage your menstruation, how can you go on to bigger and better things? Great. I know the day that one doesn't dress well or you don't or your hair's out of kilter or something, <laughs> you feel like like mm. you don't feel like excelling on that day. Yeah. And and I can imagine what happens to these youth when they have to go through what uh, what you've mentioned. Uh, going forward and in conclusion, the the team of people around you, um, uh, their plans. What well, what are their plans to take the project forward? Uh, I know that we spoke a little bit about Africa. Uh, but I believe that there's lots of relief organizations around the world that should be usurping the product and taking that across within their platforms. Uh, what's your thoughts around that? Yes, I definitely think there's a place for it for the whole world. Um, I know the, the marketing team are definitely out there getting it out as far as they can and through the whole world because it, it is a problem and it's, it's just a whole new life for women. So, yeah, the marketing team are moving forward and we acknowledge, we know there's the issue and we are trying to get it under control, but it's, <laughs> it yeah, is it's huge. Mission. So how do people <laughs> get in touch with you and your team? Um, we've got web pages. So there's www.subspads.co.za and there's Project Dignity, www.projectdignity.org.za. Uh, so the viewers can make uh, contact with you through yes. the, the website and yes, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, for information and that sort of thing. Yeah. A message to youth out there in conclusion that are experiencing the problems that you mentioned, but have probably not been contacted by mm. people like yourself or gone through that. What's your message to them? Sure, well they would, um, maybe if they went to their teachers, let their teachers know about the, the project, because the more we have people contacting government and the teachers knowing that there is the issue, because that's where it starts at school, that's where they're missing school, that then maybe there will be a big compound effect with the government and maybe they will do something about it. Sue, so thank you for coming onto the show. We're going to jump off to visuals now of Sue, and this morning I think she was at the 
and activation as we call it and there's lots of visuals there from youth and recipients uh, stay tuned until next time thank you for joining us goodbye so we got money from Investec so that we were able to make these packs to give all you girls a pack today okay how's that awesome okay let's explain it first because you might not really think it's so awesome right Jen I need you to help me hold okay so in your packs you will be receiving three pairs of panties and remember you all gave your sizes hey okay three pairs of panties one two three and can you see they've got clips on them okay I'm going to explain that all to you now nine washable pads that's the washable pad hey what does it look like does it look like a pad no. no it doesn't look like a pad it's very different hey and what do you think of it being black right what do you all think of it being black good yes okay that's good to hear right so i just want to explain how the pad works the one side is fluffy and the other side is smooth so the fluffy side is a side that goes against your skin which means the smooth side will go into the panty okay now it's got wings you can see the wings so the wings wrap around the panty gusset and they clip in okay can you all see how they just clip in simple very simple so now the pad is nice in position it's not going to move it's not going to slide it's there no accidents is that a good thing absolutely so now we wear this pad for three to six hours depending on our flow when you you can feel it's full the same as when you wear a normal pad because i wear them and you can feel it starts to get full so when you want to change you see the obviously the panty is elastic and if we just pull do you see it just stretches okay so we hold the elastic close to the clip and you just clip it off okay easy easy tip so you just clip it off and you wash it but with your pack you get little bags so if you're at school or a friend's house or somewhere and you can't wash it straight away you put a little bag and you can take it home you can wash it there okay must be washed every day and this little card that comes in your pack is your washing instructions so how do we wash the pad first we rinse it well okay we rinse it well let all the blood come out does that sound like something we can manage can we wash our pads yes good so we rinse it well let all the blood come out then we wash it with soap what soap have you girls got at home sunlight someone said omo ariel any soap put the soap on you give it a good wash rinse it well let all the soap come out you wash it again give it another good wash rinse it okay and then hang it up to dry and you use it again so it is totally reusable it's all fabrics so there's no compressed cotton or anything it's not going to disintegrate so you just wash it and use it over and over again so we wear it and we wash it and we hang it up to dry what today means to me is um, I've learned a lot about the new sanitary pad. Um, it's more easier because every month we like we have to buy pads every month and it costs us a lot of money and some children they don't have that money to buy so they miss out on school but today um, we got these free sanitary pads with um, that are attachable to the panties um, they are washable they are reusable so um, it's very it's a very nice course that we got today